Welcome to this machine learning tutorial where we are going to take images of handwritten digits and we're going to try uh, using machine learning techniques to predict which digit it actually is. So we're going to use the MNIST data set here um, for our training data. We're going to pull in uh, thousands of images of handwriting digits and we're going to try to predict which digit it actually is. So we're not going to use neural networks or anything too super complicated. The purpose of this video is to use simple tools like support vector machines and simple libraries like scikit-learn and matplotlib to just in a few lines of code create a predictor that is basically somewhere in the accuracy range from 90 to 100 percent so we're not going to achieve 100 percent but we can come close to 98 percent which is pretty amazing for such a simple model let us start by importing sklearn datasets so this is something uh, that is pretty much out of the box with scikit-learn uh, called fetch uh, open ml open ml uh, our mnist dataset is equal to fetch open ml we are going to use the mnist 784 um, dataset we are going to use uh, version 1 and we are going to set as frame to false so why is it called 784 uh, basically the reason for that is uh, that it consists of images that are 28 by 28 pixels um, and uh, 784 is actually the number of features so the number of features is the number of pixels per image so if we multiply the x-axis with the y-axis 28 by 28 we get 784 which is the number of uh, features per image so as you can see this is how our data set looks like. This is our data, uh, which will be our training data and our target data, uh, which is actually the labels. So uh, the correct labels to the data. So let us first uh, print out the number of images or instances in our data set. So we can set X and Y. So it's common to set X as the training data and Y as the label data. So MNIST uh, data, so we're going to split this one and MNIST target. And then we could also print out the shapes to see how the data actually looks like. Let's do that. And as you can see, there are 70,000 images, which consist of 784 features, or in this case, pixels. So the most important part is always learning about your data. So let us use matplotlib uh, to actually print out the data and see how our digits look like. So this is a common technique used uh, so inline, uh, which is going to display the images using uh, the Jupyter Notebook uh, libraries. So, but you can of course specify certain other libraries, like if you're going into 3D and something more complicated. But for this, this is going to be more than enough. Uh, we are going to import matplotlib as MPL, and we're going to import matplotlib pyplot as PLT. Uh, we are going to pick some random digit, which is going to be equal x. Remember, that's our data, zero. We could take any um, image we would like. And then we are going to set the uh, image sum digit reshape it. So what reshape is going to do is rearrange the pixels in such a way that we have a 28 by 28 image. If you look into it, you can see that the numpy reshape function shapes an array without changing the data of the array. So Let's return back. Now what we can do is actually plot this with image show. We are going to specify our sum digit in an image form and set some uh, basic configuration to 
MLP CM binary, since this is in a, a binary form. And the last part we need to do is called PLT show. So hopefully this is going to run. Okay, it seems I made a mistake here. And as you can see, this is our digit. So we could use, for example, another digit, which is a zero or anything else. This is a six. So now we have a basic understanding how our digits look like actually. So the next part is going to be uh, to pull out a training and test set. So we're going to need um, our data, training data for the test set, and we're going to need our labels for the test set and the same for the training sets. So uh, let's pull out x train x test y train y test is equal to x remember from earlier uh, now what we can do is specify the amount of um, images we would like to have so let's go for example to split it uh, 60,000 to 10,000 um, so to have somewhere like a split of 80 to 20 is kind of usual um, in the machine learning space to split your data. So let's go with 60,000. So this syntax basically means from zero to 60,000 uh, for the labels. Uh, for, for the test, we are going to revert this. So from 60,000 till the end, and for y, we're going to do the same thing. So till 60,000. And for our labels, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, 60,000 till the end of our data set. Uh, let's run this cell. Um, and we can actually split our data. So there was not so much that could go wrong. But still, now we come to the interesting part. Let's actually start training our model. So from sklearn uh, SVM, uh, so we're going to use a support vector machine in this case, which we can import as SVC from uh, scikit-learn. So our support vector machine classifier is going to be equal to, uh, so first of all, we need to initialize our model. Uh, we need to set some hyperparameters. So those are parameters that are going to be used while training our model. Uh, we need to set the random state. So we don't need to set this one, but uh, setting a random state is going to create reproducible results. So that if you rerun this, we get the same model initialized. So it helps with, um, with basically tracking your errors and uh, reproducing certain results. So what we are going to do now is call our classifier fit. We are going to use our train data uh, and we are going to use our label train data. So I'm now going to specify a range that is maybe smaller than this one. Uh, because it is going to take a few minutes to run it with 60,000 uh, images. So I'm going to specify something like 10,000, which is of course going to drastically reduce our accuracy. But if you're at home, just specify a larger number. When running it with 60,000 using a support vector machine, we may be able to get somewhere between 90 to 92% accuracy. So just because of speed purposes, I'm going to specify here 10,000. And I'm going to specify here also 10,000. And now uh, we can use CLF predict uh, for some digit. So to see if it is actually going to predict the correct digit. So we know that some digit is a five. So in this case, it's a six, but if you return it here, we will know it's a five. Uh, just one important step to distinguish here is between the fit and the transform function. So the fit method is calculating the mean and variance of each of the features in our data. 
and the transform method is transforming all the features. Once you're using fit in your train data, you're going to calculate the mean and variance of each feature. This means that when you're running the same in your test data, you should not run fit, but just transform. Because if you run fit again in your test data, you're going to fit different mean of variances in the test data, which you don't want to do. You want to use the same results, same model with the same data uh, that you have calculated in the training set. So very important to don't use fit in the test data. So now let's actually run this. Oops, again, uh, misspelling here. So now it's running and let's just wait. And woohoo, we have trained our model and the prediction is actually correct. So it's a five. So great, awesome. Uh, let's continue. We can also look into the model a little bit more to learn what's under the hood. So if we use our classifier here and print out the classes, we can see which classes we see here. I'm really bad at typing. So as you can see, those are classes. So our labels, our digits. So we are trying to distinguish digits from zero to nine. Um, we can also use a decision function to see with what accuracy or scores each digit is calculated. So use some digit scores classifier. We can use decision function and pass in some digit and we can print this out digit scores. Let's run this. As, is, as you can see, those are our, our scores. So for the number five, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, we get a decision score of 9.2, which is pretty good. But the others, for example, a one and a three are also pretty close. So this is something that we can use later on to retrain our data in a better way. So what we can also do is evaluate it using something like uh, our scores, cross value scores. So from sklearn uh, model selection import uh, cross val score. So this is going to basically split our data into sets, we can specify the number of sets and it is going to run the other sets against one set. It is going to create all the other sets as training sets and one is going to be a test set. And it is going to repeat this and calculate our scores. So cross, well, score, uh, we give in our model, our support vector machine, uh, we then specify our train and labels and then we can specify the uh, splits so in this case let's say we split it in three the more splits we have the longer it's going to take and we can specify the scoring let's go for accuracy so let's run this and let's wait again Okay, so our scores are done and they are pretty bad. The reason for this is that we are just using a fraction of our training data. So I'm going to move this to 60 and run it afterwards. But let's first just um, go through different measurements. So let us uh, do one last thing. And this is uh, measuring our precision and recall, which is something pretty important to know the quality of your model. So we're going to use sklearn metrics, import precision score and recall score. So from sklearn model selection, we're going to import cross val predict. And we're going to have our train predictor equal to cross val predict. Uh, we are going to again use our model here, our classifier, 
and we're going to specify our uh, train and labels. Uh, and we're going to set the number of splits that we want to have. So let's say three again. Uh, now we need to calculate our precision score, which is going to be the Y train that we have specified here and our predictions. So this is going to be our uh, precision score. And then we can also calculate our recall score, which is basically going to be the same thing. And we also need to specify an average setting because we are uh, not using a binary classifier here, but rather a multi-class classifier that can classify any digit. So uh, we're going to specify, for, for example, micro. So you can go and read into more detail which classifiers you can use here. Um, but that should be it. We should be able to run this and get our precision and recall score. But what I'm going to do now is just run the entire set because otherwise our results are going to be terrible. So I'm going to remove this, but I would recommend you maybe just uh, to try it out to use a smaller data set because it's going to save you a lot of time. And when you're sure what you're doing, then of course use the entire set. So uh, let's rerun those two again here and just wait. So I have rerun everything and uh, used the full data set. And I also tried a few different classifiers. In this case, I used the one versus rest classifier and I have rerun the cross val score and I was able to come close to 90%. After tweaking the data a little bit um, using a pipeline, I was able to come close to 90%. So I'm also going to create a video about creating this pipeline. So basically the pipeline just comes down to creating a standard imputer and finding better ways to calculate for the missing and null values. So if that's something that you're interested in and if you would like to see the entire process, how to get to this 90%, accuracy rate, uh, please leave a like below in the comments, go to Novaltech Media or just um, leave me some comments on what type of content you would like to see next. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next